sanctuary cities, those are the cities in our nation that refuse to enforce immigration law. So they become havens not only for illegal aliens, but so many of those illegal aliens that go into other crimes. We remember the case of Kate Steinle being shot by an illegal out in San Francisco. What can be done to eliminate the scourge of sanctuary cities? Well, let's call via telephone on one of my old colleagues on Capitol Hill. Congressman John Culberson of Texas is the chair of the Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice and Science of the House Appropriations Committee. John, it's so good to have you tonight on Newsmax Prime. J.D., it's wonderful to uh, be with you, and I, I'll tell you, there are very few members of Congress with your courage, your determination, and your focus on protecting this nation by securing our borders, and I thank you for all your, your hard work over the years. Well, you are working hard now. You control the purse strings, and you wrote a letter to Attorney General Loretta Lynch requesting that she act to address sanctuary cities, or you would stop her from being able to move money around to reprogram funds. Any response from the AG yet? No response yet from the eight, from the Attorney General, uh, J.D., but you're exactly right. As the, I'm the new chairman of the Commerce Justice Science Subcommittee on Appropriations. I'm the responsible for overseeing and, and, and the, the, uh, the, the way our hard-earned tax dollars are spent by the Department of Justice and federal law enforcement. And as the chairman, I've got the ongoing authority day by day, week by week, to oversee their spending plan, their reprogramming, as you just said, their ability to move money around within the agency. And the founding fathers, J.D., as you know, entrusted the power of the purse to Congress, and then the Congress entrusted that authority to the individual subcommittee chairman on appropriations. And that has not been used that much because we never had a president that was as lawless as this one. So I had to pull this tool out of the constitutional toolbox, and I used it successfully last spring, J.D., when the ATF attempted to ban 223 ammunition. Uh, I called the head of the ATF in. I said, I'm going to have to cut off... a. Uh, some of your money, you can't reprogram, you can't move money, I'm going to have to veto this and veto that, or drop the ammo ban. And they drop the ammo ban within less than three working days. So I've done it before, I'll do it again, and the message to the DOJ is there's a new chairman in town, and the new rule is if you want federal law enforcement money, enforce federal law. Well, John, there's been a larger criticism that with uh, the last budget accord, uh, new Speaker Ryan basically acquiesced to the president on so much of his agenda, including funding for sanctuary cities. So you're getting tough now, but isn't it after the fact? No. In fact, we uh, tried to get, of course, uh, specific prohibitions in the appropriations bill against sanctuary cities, but... Uh, the Senate took those out in final negotiations, but actually without the appropriations bill, J.D., I couldn't do what I'm doing. It's when you buy, the best analogy I can give you is when you, I don't know anybody who bought a house or a business on a loan and only did it with a two-page contract. The reason you sign that great big thick stack of title documents is that gives the bank every page, every paragraph, every word is another hook the bank has got in you to get their money back. And the appropriations bill is the same way. In fact, your listeners, I direct them, if they go to Hillsdale College, the November issue of Imprimus, their monthly publication, Reviving a Constitutional Congress, points out, J.D., that the only way to exercise the power of the purse is with a detailed appropriations bill. So it's actually quite the opposite. By passing the appropriations bill, we, pre we preserved the power of the purse, and it gives individual subcommittee chairmen like me the ability to exercise authority like this. I couldn't do what I'm doing now. With the Department of Justice, I could not have stopped ATF from banning 223 ammunition under a CR. Or a Understood. Let, let me get, because time is short, pardon the interruption, your home state, we understand uh, Department of Homeland Security is cutting the surveillance on our southern border by 50%. Your reaction? Unacceptable, outrageous, no excuse. This president has been so lawless and so destructive and so... Uh, uh, he's done so much damage to our immigration laws. We had to go to the Fifth Circuit. Has finally stopped his amnesty. For example, uh, there is we well, there's no amnesty to fund or defund in the appropriations bill. As a side note, but we will on appropriations, JD, make sure that those uh, surveillance flights are continued. That uh, as uh, in the appropriations bill, I put language. We will have to leave it there, John Culbertson. We'll keep an eye on those things. We thank you for your time, and we'll be back with more after this.